one one. In the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was toward the divine, and the Logos was divine. This is the beginning of St. John's Gospel, and it so clearly parallels so much in the Hermetica. It is drawing upon the pagan tradition, the Greek philosophic tradition, and is clearly appealing to a pagan philosophic audience. Of course, Christians have very little understanding of this, and so they have very little understanding of the nature, the divine nature claimed for Jesus in this gospel. They'll say that Jesus is the Son of God, but they have very little understanding of what that means. This opening passage is profound and beautiful, and there are three distinct phases within it. In the beginning was the Logos, refers to the divine in the eternal realm. That is the beginning of all things. All things in time and space arise out of eternity. And so the transcendent state is indicated by this first part of John 1.1. 1, 1. The Logos was toward the divine, indicates the imminent presence of the Logos as the cosmos and in the cosmos in the Christian tradition. There is a distinction in the Christian tradition the Logos is in the world, but not of the world, is not merely the cosmos, but the divine life, the divine spark behind the cosmos through which everything comes to be. John is very clever here because he does not wish to alienate any potential audience member. And that includes the Gnostics. The Gnostics believed that this whole creation was made by a demiurgic power. And if he were to simply say that the Logos created everything and that the Logos was the cosmos, this would fly in the face of Gnosticism. And so he says that the Logos was toward the divine. He indicates that Logos is in creation as a divine spark, as divine life, and that all things come about through the Logos, that is, Nothing can be created without the Logos. He doesn't say, and he's careful not to say, that the Logos or that God created everything, that is, the transcendent, the true divinity. But it is through the creative power of the Logos that all things are created, and this allows the Gnostics, if they wish, to believe in a demiurgic power. But John still acknowledges that the divine is behind all things, that nothing can be created without the Logos. But the Logos enters into creation. There's the urge within creation, within the universe, within the cosmos, within human beings, within matter, if you like, toward the divine, toward the realization of divine potential. Like a divine seed, the Logos unfolds an innate divinity. And that leads us to the third part of the saying. And the Logos was divine, or the Logos was a god, <laughs> usually translated, and the Logos was God. It could easily be translated, and God was the Logos. <laughs> but this third phase is esoterically understood to mean that as the divine potential unfolds in created beings, they, like God seeds, become God. Not the usual Christian teaching, but it's there in the esoteric strand, in the depth of John's mysteries. John 1.1